Hello teachers, my name's Nick, and today I'm going to show you how to create a really nice graphic organizer. So the graphic organizer we're going to be creating is my homework, of course. Um, this homework is I'm supposed to create an interactive activity for my fellow classmates. And we're going to be making something like this. Now, I'm not sure why the bottom shows this, but we will get to that. So the first thing you're going to do is right click on your desktop, you're going to create new, and you're going to create a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. This presentation we're just going to name Activity. Go ahead and open it up, and you should have a page like this. Now, first things first, we want it to be the size of paper. So we go to Design, we go to Slide um, Size, and we click on Custom. The standard size of a paper is eight and a half by 11. And you'll see here, you can also swap it between portrait and landscape. We're gonna use portrait here. Um, this one doesn't really matter as much. You can just click maximize or ensure fit. We're gonna be changing mostly everything anyways. So I'm just gonna click on maximize. Um, now we're going to go to home and you'll notice we have a bunch of slides we can insert but none of these are the slides that we want. So I like to go to view and edit the slide master. The reason why I edit the slide master is because the slide master is something that the students won't be able to change. Um, if the students are editing your documents online, uh, they won't have access to it, period. And if they're editing it on a computer, like the actual application, they would have to know how to do this. And this is actually a little more complicated if you don't know it's here. So we have our slide master. This is our slide master. Everything here tells us what everything on every other page will look like. So it's important that we keep this page. Everything else isn't quite as important, but we'll just leave it for now. Um, first off, I'm going to start by inserting a shape. And I'm just going to insert a rectangle. So I've clicked rectangle and then I click once. Oops, sorry. And then I click once. And this is my rectangle. But we don't want the rectangle to look like that. So I'm going to change the shape outline to white. Or sorry, the uh, shape fill to white. So the inside of the shape is now white. Anything that is behind it won't uh, be seen. So this could be like our page border. I'm going to change the, uh, let's see, the weight if i go to shape outline i want it to be black and i want the weight to be three pixels additionally this is not where i want it and i want it to be a particular size so if i go to shape and i can right click on it and go to format shape if i click here size and properties i can click on size and i can change the size the height is going to be well if we want half inch margins then we just subtract one from 11 so that makes it 10 and our width is going to be instead of eight and a half it's going to be seven and a half now it can be quite hard to position this um, you can find the dots on the page those red lines tell you exactly where it's at so right now it's telling me it's in the center we have the red dotted lines going up and to the side so if i just let go it should be in the center we can double check that by clicking on the shape. We go to shape options, size and position, and we check the position. So from the top left, it is 0.5. From the top uh, left, it is also 0.5. So that would be the center. Now this shape is covering everything. We don't want that. We want to send it to the back. So the way I did that is I right clicked on the shape and clicked send to back. With PowerPoint, it's important to know that you have the option to set the layer that everything is on. And layering is important. That's why it's so easy to edit graphic organizers using Microsoft Office or Google Slides. I'm gonna click here. I'm going to move this up a little bit. That way I can move these three things in. So how I do that is I hold, or I click on this one, then I hold Shift. I click on the next one and I hold shift again and click on the last one. And then I can use the arrow keys to move this up to where I want it. 
And I think right there is about good. So now I'm going to edit this middle one, and I'm going to pull it down just a bit. And that looks good to me. So now that I have this slide untouched, unmodified, other than it has a background, this one actually applies to everything. So let's go ahead and make our background. You notice that I had a background when I did the engaging activity. This was my background here. I had a bunch of different pictures. So for this activity, I want discourse as one. So I'm just going to quickly Google discourse clip art. Discourse clip art. And while going through the images, I can find, first off, one of the first pictures I chose when it loads. This is one of the first pictures that I chose. Um, and now what I want to do here specifically is it has a white background. I don't want the white background. So I'm going to click on remove background under picture format. I'm going to click remove background. You'll notice this doesn't look exactly how I want it. I can mark areas for removal. Or uh, let's see. Whoops. There we go. Or I can mark areas to keep. And I want to keep this area. I want to keep this area up here. Over here, the nose is still kind of cut off, and then the neckline as well. And this is what I want. That's what I want to keep. So I save changes. And you'll notice now I have this with a transparent background. I'm going to resize it. I would like it a little bit smaller. And for now, I'm just going to drag it off to the side. There are more discourse ones that I used, uh, such as this picture. Uh, this picture was already removed or already had a removed background. Um, if you're resizing both, make sure you just select the one that you're supposed to resize. And holding shift allows you to change the size without changing the uh, aspect ratio. So if I don't hold shift, then I could squish it and I don't I don't want to do that. What I want to do is hold shift so that it resizes nicely. And I can just drag this wherever for now. We'll put it here. I also had um, classroom clip art because we were dealing with a classroom. And I found this image. Again, I'm just going to click off because I had already selected that one. So they were both selected. I click off and then I click back on. I like to print things in black and white. So what I'm going to do is go to picture format and I'm going to change the color to 0% saturation. And now I have my image with no saturation. Oops. Resize it, and I can put it where I'd like. Lastly, I did search up classroom behavior. Uh, behavior clip art is what I said. Because what I'm working on deals with behavior. And so I found this one, um, which already does have a background. You can go ahead and click on picture, remove background. Um, mark the areas that you want to keep. And in this one, I had to do a lot of keep um, because there are a lot of areas that were not showing up. And this could take a little bit of time. So instead of going through and doing them each individually, I am just going to copy what I have from the last one. Let's go to engaging activity. And then I'm going to go to View, Slide Master, go to the top one, and I am just going to copy one of these. And I can close out of it, Engaging Activity, and paste it here. So you'll notice that mine was actually cropped as well. Um, so again, in picture format, I could change the color. I changed the color saturation to zero. And in the remove background, I've actually removed specific backgrounds and added the specific ones I want to keep. Additionally, I went to picture and I clicked on crop. So crop allows you to select the size or what you want. And in this case, I only wanted the one picture. So now I can copy and paste a couple of times. Copy, paste. I'm going to crop this one as well, picture format and crop. And I'm going to move it over to the next one. So that's two. Copy paste. I am then going to picture format and crop. Again, I pull it down. 
that's three. Copy paste. I'm going to crop again. Select the next picture. Notice that being able to select the picture is pretty important. Even if you find something that has multiple images, you can always crop it so that you select exactly what you want and put it where you want it. So picture and crop. So now I have all of them. And all I have to do now is position them where I would like. Know that the sides when I print this are going to get cut off. So it's important to make sure that that's just something you understand. Um, I am going to copy and paste multiple of these. We'll put one down here. And you can be random with these. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right now they go over the top of the background, but in a moment we're going to send it to back. Um, the commands I'm using are Control C for copy and Control V for paste. And these command shortcuts are very important because you can start to paste things as quickly as I'm going. It does speed up the process if you know the actual commands. Maybe we'll do the block one again. We'll put the block one over here. Drop that down there. Um, important note, if you want to change the direction, you can. You just hold shift to resize and you pull the arrow to the other side you want. Okay, and I think this is pretty good. So now what I have to do is I have to select all of my images. So I click on the first one. I hold shift and I click on all the other ones. This is a feature that I personally like to use and I will teach you how to use this feature as well. In Microsoft Office, you can actually group objects. So you have right click and go to group and you group. Now everything's a group. If I move one, I move them all. Um, but what I actually wanted to do was send to back. So now I've sent them all to the back. This is what it'll look like on every page now. Um, I have my background and the border. That's the first step in creating a graphic organizer. Now that I have my background, I wanna think about what the layout looks like. And I'm gonna insert a new layout, this button here. I'm not gonna click up here and click insert new layout. I like to insert it here and pull it to the top. This is because my top one is the one that I want to see first. I'm going to rename this activity. And then I also don't want anything on here already. So I just click and drag, highlight everything, and click the delete button or the backspace button. That'll get rid of everything. So now if I delete this, I can insert my activity. You'll notice it's blank. That's because we have nothing edited yet. So I'm gonna go back to view and click on Slide Master. Um, that's how I close the Slide Master, by the way. It's just this little X button up here. Now I'm going to split it up. The way you saw in the engaging activity is, let's see if I can pull it back up. I had some solid lines here. Um, they looked pretty evenly distributed and then I had text inside of each of those, as well as like another line here, student activity. So this line is the only line that I had to add. The other lines are just part of a table. So if I go to activity, I'm going to insert, and I'm going to insert a table. My table had three, and we had four options. So this is my table. First thing I do is click this drop down and I clear the table. So that clears the table format. Now it's exactly what I want. I'm going to go to layout, 
I'm going to change the line spacing, or sorry, table layout. No, it's under home. I'm going to change the line spacing. I like to have the line spacing be 1.5, and I'm going to change this to uh, 16 point font. I like font sizes that are eights, and then I want this to be in the center. So now anything I type has a font size of 16, is centered, and is also um, at, with a line spacing of 1.5. Now I'm going to drag this where I want it. And in fact, if I want to, I can go to right click and click on format shape, go down to position. And then remember my position, I like to be 0.5 and 0.5. That tells me I'm in the right spot. My width is a little harder to do. The width, I want to make it each of these at, uh, let's say, we'll just increase for a bit. 2.5, which says the width is 7.5 inches, exactly what I want. Now the height, I can increase this all the way down to the bottom. Um, and it says it's 10 inches, which is exactly what I wanted. Now I can leave it at that. I'm going to resize my categories. I wanted this to be quite a bit smaller, and I wanted this one to be in the center. Um, I think about right here is good, and then we pull this one this way. I could do the math and find it exactly, but I'm not going to in this video. Um, so then I have this. I want to make sure that my table has border sizes of three pixels. Um, and I like having three pixels as my border size. I like solid line. And then I also like my border to be black. And so then I can click on all borders. Now all of my borders have that. And maybe you don't want this one to be as uh, I would say bright. And so what I'm going to do is highlight the two and select inside borders. I'm going to change my inside borders to one pixel. Again, inside borders to one pixel. These ones I wanted to merge. So I select, drag across, right click and click on merge cells. Click here, drag across, right click, Click on Merge Cells. And so now I have the general look of the document. Um, I also want these ones, these inner ones, to be smaller. Just a personal preference. Inside ones, small. Outside ones are large. And so now I have my basic outline of the way I want it to look. And so now all it is, is that I have to insert text. And in my case, I'm going to insert, go with text box. And in this text box, I'm going to say, what discourse do teachers and other staff have towards their students? And I can drag this one wherever I'd like. I like it to be here, and I can always make sure that it's in the correct position, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and drag this back. My font size is 18. I'm going to reduce it to 16. 16 is fine for me. And then I can just copy and paste. I can do the same thing. Drag this where I want it and change the text to what discourse do you have towards your students? And then finally, I can copy and paste again. And in this case, I'm going to drag it up here, pull it all the way across, and change the text again. Um, how do you think the attitude this course surrounding the students 
plays a role in how the students behave. And then do you feel the students are aware of the discourse surrounding them? I'm going to reduce that to font size 14. That way it fits on the same line. Copy and paste again and drag it down here. Copy, paste, remember control C, control V. And then I'm just gonna change the text again. What are ways in which you promote a positive this oops this course um, surrounding your students and then how can you engage uh, sorry encourage positive discourse uh, between students oops always glad when it automatically corrects some of these students. There we go. Okay. And I have a few more to copy and paste. Let me control C, control V. In this case, I want it up here. And I want it to be in this box. It's all about trying to position that nicely. I'm going to change the text to say staff attitude. And then I also want this to be centered. And right here is good. My other one is going to say student behavior. And I can drag that one over here. Um, in this case, this is what I did for mine. And it did kind of come out like this as well. Because this one's a little bit bigger. You can't really resize it. So what I did is I clicked Enter here. I changed this to 7. And I clicked enter behind here and I changed this to seven. That way it's the same size because seven plus seven, that's 14. And now it's the same size as that. So now here's where I inserted my first line. I clicked on insert, I went to shapes, and I clicked on the line. I clicked right where I thought the line should be, held shift. If I'm not holding shift, it goes all wherever it wants. If you hold shift, it stays where you want it. Um, and then I stopped here. I changed my shape outline to black and I changed the weight to one. So now I can easily hold down my click over here and select exactly what I want. And I'm going to actually move this line up a bit. Now I'm gonna select it. Okay, I'm going to right click and click on group. Again, control C, control V. Now I can drop this down here in a similar spot. Okay, now what I'm going to do is highlight just these four boxes and go to table, uh, sorry, go to home and align text on the bottom. That way, whatever I type goes here first. So I'm going to say mostly positive, uh, positive, negative, mostly negative. And then I can enter again. I'm going to change this to font size eight. Eight looks about the center. Go with seven, I'm gonna go with six. Now it looks mostly like the center. Oops. If you do something wrong, like I just did, um, like you accidentally drag this whole thing, you can hit Control Z to undo. So now I'm going to select everything in this box. Um, sorry. Go up to the top. Hold Shift. Use the arrow keys to move. And now I'm going to hit Control C and Control V. 
Control Shift V. Oh, uh, let's see. How did I do that? 16, right click, paste. I just want the text. Control Z. All right, let's try it again. So if I select everything here, sorry about my phone, copy and paste just the text. Why is this one a different size? Ah, right. Um, I forgot. This box is smaller. So what I need to do then is select it all and change its size to 14. I want to check, check this size as well. I'm going to change it to 14, which means I can increase the one down here to 8. Now let's go to 10. And so the reason why I had to do that was because these two do not have the same width as each other. And so I want them to look as though they have the same width, even though they don't. Okay. And so now this one, I can just select it all, copy, paste just the text, Again, change this last size to 10. Was it 10? No, it was 12. So these two need to be 14. And this one needs to be 12. I can copy here. Paste. This one I'm going to change to 12. And there we go. Now I have everything where it needs to be. I'm also going to insert a shape. I'm going to insert an oval. So instead of holding shift, I'm just going to drag. I want this to be filled with nothing. That way, when I use it, I can just select whichever word or whichever word phrase fits best. Yeah, and this looks like it'll fit nicely for when whoever's using this has to copy and paste. I'm going to go to Shape Format, change the outline, the weight to 3 pixels, and I want the color to be black. So in this case, I will then drag this one. I'm just going to put it under Staff Attitude and hit Control-C. I'm going to need that. That's why I hit Control-C. So now, if I close the, click off of it and close the Slide Master, I can hit Control V, and this shape is in the exact same spot. Notice that I can't interact with the background. It's because anything on the background you can't interact with. Anything in Slide Master you can't interact with. Not even this. So, now all the person has to do is Control C, Control V, and they can drag the shape wherever they want. Or maybe I don't think they know how to do that. So what I'm going to do is make multiple copies in the same spot. So again, I hit Control C, Control V. I'm dragging it in the same spot. So that's two. This is three. And this is four. So now they can just drag these four. All they have to do is drag it. One. Sorry, one, two, three, four, right? That's all they have to do now. And I don't like this being here after the four are used. So what I'm going to do is view, slide master, and I'm actually going to delete this shape here. Oops. Nope, here we go. View, slide master, sorry. Selecting the shape is kind of hard. There we go. And so now I only have the four shapes which are right here. And they can be dragged wherever. But what if I want people to type? I can't really type anything. So what I'm going to do is insert placeholders. So if I click on Slide Master again, I can actually insert a placeholder. Content means they can insert pictures, tables, medias, or text. Whatever they want to edit. In this case, if I wanted people to only insert a picture, I would just click picture. Maybe I only want a chart, only click chart.
Maybe I want a video, then I'd only click video, and this is what students will be able to enter. In my case, I just want text. So I selected the text, I clicked on the screen, and I'm dragging it to the size I want. And then I probably want this font size to be a little bit smaller, so I click inside, I hit Control A, and I change the font size uh, under, under home, I'm going to change this to, I want it to be 14. Uh, maybe I want it to be 12. This is 12 on all levels. I also don't want it to be bullet point or bullet pointed, and that's fine the way it is. So now I'm going to select that same text box, control C, control V, and I can paste it in the part below. Again, control C, control V. I can use it in the next spot. And then control C, control V. I use it in the last spot. So now students should be able to just click and edit what it is they need to edit. So if I click on slide master again, close slide master. Um, and I right click here, I change the layout, I reapply this layout, you see that I can now click on the text boxes and type anything that I need to type. And so now I have an online graphic organizer. That's great and all, but how do I, how is this useful? How can I share it to my students? First off, I can print this. Second off, I can share it to my students. So what I'm going to do is, first off, I hit Control S to save. I'm going to close this activity, and you'll notice my activity is here now. I'm also going to close the engaging activity, the other one that I did. Um, what I would like to do now is open up my rename. This looks a little confusing for some of you, but uh, I have a test group here and a test group.bat. Um, this test group.bat is actually just there to hold the uh, title that I would like. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to create it. So what I do is I right click, go to new, I click on text document, I name it. I make sure that this extension back here says .bat. So I name it test group.bat. And that turns it into the bat file, which you see here. A bat file is just an executable. When you click it, it'll work. In my case, uh, I'm still working on trying to get that to work. So what I do is I just right click and click on edit with Notepad++. You might not have that, so you might just right click and click on edit. But then this is what I have over here. So inside the bat file, um, I have get content path test group.txt. So from the text group.txt, this file here, it's going to do something for each of those lines, and we have four lines here. It's going to copy the name of the document um, in whatever type it is, and it'll name it whatever you have here. So this is important because if I had 20-something students, I could just create a file for 20-something students. Um, let's drag my activity into here. Um, now I'm going to name this um, right here, it's actually just named activity.pptx with a capital A. It is case sensitive. You have to be case sensitive in this case. Now what I can do is maybe I don't want it to say week whatever, activity whatever, but my students stay the same. So I can hit control. Uh, if you have Notepad++, you can highlight what you want, hit control F, and actually go with replace. So anything that says this, I'm going to replace it with a space, a line, I'm going to say week 10, I'm going to say activity, uh, reading activity. Um, this was for one of my reading activities and I'm just gonna hit replace all. Now you'll notice all of these have changed the name and I changed the name of this for let's say 26 students or however many students I have. And then I can just close out of this, hit control A here to select everything, copy it, close out of here, 
And now what I'm going to do is hold shift, right click, and click open PowerShell window here. If I hit control V, this is the command that I'm looking for. And then I click enter. It will now have renamed and copied that file for all of my students. Um, it'll have their student name, the week, and the reading activity. This is useful because now I can go to, uh, let's say, Outlook, or sorry, yeah, OneDrive. And in OneDrive, I can then create like an education folder. I can add a new folder. In my case, I'm just gonna create new folder and name it week 10. I could break it up into more categories if I needed to. And then I can actually just select all of my students' files and drag it into there. I would have one for myself as well. But now I can click on share and I can type the emails of the students that are in my class. And I'll share that with each of the students and then they'll have their own individual access to their own slide. Additionally, I will also have access so I can see their work at any time. Um, any day, and then I can also provide feedback whenever I need to. So that is all about creating a graphic organizer and sharing your graphic organizer to your students. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.